Greetings, folks. My name is Michael Rosso with the Film Photography Podcast, and today I'm going to be doing an overview on the Mansfield Holiday 2 8mm movie camera. This is a turret lens movie camera, which means it has three lenses on the front of it that you could turn at any given time to get a different focal length on your camera. This camera is from the mid-20th century and was a pretty popular model here in the U.S. throughout that time. This camera takes what's known as double eight film. Eight millimeter film, double eight film, is film that comes on a little 25 foot roll and it's 16 millimeters in width and it's called double eight because when you're shooting in this camera you essentially are shooting twice you put your roll in you run it through your camera then when it rolls out you literally flip the roll and then shoot the other side. And what's happening in the gate of your camera is that you're shooting two sides of the film. You'll shoot one side of the film, and then when you flip it, you're shooting the other side of the film. Back in the day before home video, you would send this film to the lab, they would develop it, they would slit it down the middle, and then give to you 50 feet of regular eight film for projection. These days, if you're still shooting black and white or color reversal film the same process is applied if you're shooting a color or black and white negative film a lot of times you'll receive back this 16 millimeter film and the splitting will be done electronically as we do here at the film photography project in our cinema department where we offer developing scans for home movie film Here's a quick overview crash course so you can get started using your Holiday 2 camera. In the front are your three lenses. If you own one of these cameras, it's quite possible it was made in a different factory, a different year, and some of the specs may be a little bit different. This particular one in my hand, the f-stops start at f1.8 and go all the way up to f16. For this particular type of camera that has a turret lens system, when you're setting your f-stops, it actually is happening behind the lens. So when you're setting your f-stops, those apertures are being changed behind the lens. So when you turn your lens, all the aperture controls are being handled behind it. Uh, on the front of your camera, you have your three lenses, a telephoto lens, a standard 13 millimeter lens, and a wide angle lens. Up here is a selenium light meter. This light meter will give you a guide on the top of how to set your f-stops. However, in the 21st century, there's a very good chance that this light meter doesn't work or is not accurate. I highly suggest you kind of ignore it and use a handheld light meter in your phone, a light meter app or a handheld light meter. When you're looking through the camera from this viewfinder, you're actually looking through a parallax. You're not looking directly through your lens. And as you can see on this viewfinder, you have different zones. And those zones were color-coded for you to know which lens you're using. So, very simple. The widest is your wide lens. The next, inside the yellow, is your 13 millimeter lens. And then in your... Red is your telephoto lens. That's so you could frame up your shot. Uh, on the side of the camera are your f-stops and some filters. I'll come back to that. Here is your film compartment. We'll come back to that. Viewfinder. Selenium light meter. Light meter is not connected in any way, shape, or form to the lens. So this is not an automatic camera. It's a fully manual camera that just happens to have a light meter glued to the top of it. Uh, bottom, tripod socket, terrific. On the other side is your uh, frame counter telling you how many feet you have left when you're shooting. Your crank, this is a wind camera. This camera does not take any batteries whatsoever. You simply wind it up to shoot with it. 
which is terrific. Your shutter, which you have either run or single frame. Speaking of single frame, there's also a port for a um, cable release if you want to do single frame photography. If you're an aspiring animator and you want to animate some things, I'm guessing you could do single frame. Okay, how to shoot. It's not overly complicated, and once you run a few rolls through this camera, take it from me, you'll be a pro. So I made some little cheats on here, so I knew what the heck was going on. As I mentioned, they color-coded the lenses, but, you know, if you can't see color, or if it's just, it's just too difficult when I'm out in the field, I kind of want to know what lens I'm using, and I want to know what position the lens needs to be in in order to know that I'm shooting through that lens. So I put a little piece of tape here. So when the lens is in this position up top, that's when you're shooting through it. So I put a little note on my lenses wide so I can make some quick changes in the field wide. This says telephoto right on it. Terrific. And then 13 millimeter, which is considered your standard lens. I like to shoot wide personally, so I usually am, I usually have my wide lens selected. Now here, and this varies from model to model, are a series of filters. And if you happen to have the manual, I found the manual kind of useless, quite frankly. It's nice to have. Uh, if you want to see the manual, I'll uh, put a downloadable link so you could check it out for yourself. Uh, so here are some filters. And you could just simply look through the lens to know what's going on. So there's one of the filters is no filter at all, which I usually select. The second filter looks to me to be a UV filter, which I don't use. The third filter on this particular model is very handy. And you can actually, I think you can actually see it. Yes. And that is a 85 orange filter. Now, that is useful when you're shooting T films. T meaning tungsten. T meaning uh, these, are, these are films that are designed to be shot indoors. So if you're going in daylight, you may want to put that orange filter over the lens. Now, these days, of course, when you're shooting negative films and you're getting them scanned, the color corrections can be done in the scan. I would not sweat it or even think about it. And I have to tell you, I usually just leave the filter in the off position. No filter in front, I should say. No filter behind my lens. This camera, like most regular 8 cameras, operates at 16 frames per second. There's no changing of the frame rate on this camera. So at 16 frames per second, that's giving you a shutter of 1 30th of a second. And that's very useful information if you're using a light meter app, which I highly, highly recommend. When you have your light meter app open, you'll put in the ISO of your film. With film, the ISO of your roll is set, meaning you buy a roll of film that has a specific ISO, and that's it for the entire roll. You cannot switch ISOs mid-roll when using a film camera. So in a light meter or light meter app, you put in the ISO of your film, you take your meter reading, and then underneath the shutter speed, 1 30th of a second, above that usually is the f-stop to set. And once again, as you start shooting this camera regularly, you'll get very used to, very quickly, if you're out in the sun, you'll know that you probably need to shoot f-16. Also, these cameras, because they have such a low shutter speed, are designed to use fairly low ISO film. That's why we offer at the Film Photography Project 40 ISO film in color and in black and white because that is a really good ISO to use outside in daylight. Also, some of the higher speed films that we offer, like our 400 ISO black and white negative or 500 ISO color negative are great to use indoors with a light panel or just turn all the lights on indoors uh, of your house. 
Okay, film compartment. This is probably the trickiest part for folks new to this type of photography. And once you take a look inside uh, uh, the film compartment, they're, each camera, they're very, very similar. This particular camera has a fairly easy, um, this is known as the film gate. It's fairly easy to load. It has a spring spring held film gate this holds the film against the pressure plate so when you're shooting uh, it goes smoothly through your camera so you can expose your film uh, make sure your camera comes with a take-up spool very important and it's good to know that you can only load the film one way so when you have your film roll here are some tips on loading so don't get the film sweats don't worry about it just go out go out shoot a test roll have some fun Okay, the thing to know is that you're looking for side one of your film. And for side one of your film, it will put the emulsion side, that's the photosensitive side of your film, against your lens. So that's what the light is coming in through your lens onto the photosensitive portion of your, of your film. The flip side is a shiny base side. So you don't want to load your camera incorrectly. And always remember that the emulsion side faces your lens. That should be very helpful. Now, when you're loading your film, what you don't want is the film to, what I call, get away from you. You don't want the film, and this is not a full roll, this is just a test roll. You don't want the film to like unravel in your hands, and then you'll, you're left with a little bit of a nightmare. Uh, always have a dark room, or if, if a dark film-changing bag where you can uh, uh, tend to what I call emergencies. But lately, I've been putting the roll on the take-up spool like that, emulsion side facing the lens, and then I put it... On, put it on the post in your camera. Only goes on one way. Oh, beautiful. Then it threads behind the pressure plate. Hold the plate open with your hand. It fits in behind it. As you see, there's an arrow here, so you know which way you're turning. This goes on the post. Take up. Great. This goes behind the lens. And you want to make sure it, it's kind of sitting in there properly. You could do a little test like that. Now, I do not recommend shooting old expired film. Like, if you go to ebay.com, you'll see a lot of Kodak Kodachrome film. Processing is not available for color Kodachrome anymore. But if you can get a roll really cheap, or if you buy a camera on eBay and it comes with an old roll, you may want to use that roll just to test your camera. This way you run the roll through it. You see how everything works. You get comfortable with loading, and you don't have to feel like you're, you may be wasting a roll of fresh film. Also, once you cap your camera, once you put this on your camera, do not open this film compartment while you're shooting to check your film. Like, oh, I want to check my film. Did I finish side one? Nope, still going. Every time you do that, you're exposing your film, and it will create horrible um, flashes, um, light leaks. So... For the purpose of this video, I'm going to leave the lid open. And we're going to roll through this just so you can see what happens. You get about 30 seconds per full crank. I usually crank um, consistently and gently. You don't want to put any, you know, you don't want to be violent with your camera. And then you feel it getting tight. And then you could be fairly confident you're ready to go. And what we're looking for here is the rollout of side one. By the way, this arm here is resting against your take-up spool, and that is what gives you the indicator of how many feet you have left on the other side of your camera. Wait, are we getting to the end? There it goes. Okay. Now, when you're shooting, as you become experienced with your camera, you'll actually hear it roll out. You hear you hear like a little rollout. Okay, so what this means is you're at the family barbecue or picnic or a holiday a family meal, and it's time to flip the roll. This is very important. Very dim light. You open the camera, 
All your film from side one is now on your take-up spool. This is the take-up spool that came with the camera, and this will remain with your camera. Very important. It's very important to shoot side two. You don't want to just shoot side one and send it off to the lab. First of all, you'll lose your camera roll, reel, and you'll only have, you wasted half your money. So, okay, here we go. So now we have the film on side two. Here's our original spool. And what we're going to do is literally flip them. We're going to flip them. And it's the same exact process as side one. So you take your roll that is now filled with film. You flip it so that it becomes the feed side with the emulsion side, dull side, facing the lens. Then you take your original roll, take it out, flip it to side two. You see the arrow? Yep. And then I'm going to do the same trick I did first side and you could either load it put it through the gate and then put this on or you can do it this method very important i can't stress enough don't sweat it don't get nervous uh if people are yelling at you and bugging you like you know just go somewhere quiet where no one's bugging you this is side two Always replace the door on your camera. Great. And now you're ready to shoot your movie. If you're buying this camera on eBay or someone gives it to you, you know, just take some lens cleaner, clean your lenses, make sure your lenses are clean. A lot of times I just run out and shoot and I don't re even realize that my lens is dirty. And when you're out shooting, um, remember to set your f-stop and have some fun. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions, as always, you could leave some comments down below or shoot me an email, michael at filmphotographyproject.com. It's been a real pleasure. The FPP Stock's new, fresh, double eight film. So we can get these cameras, these great cameras, back into action shooting movies. See you soon. Wilma, let's go home. <laughs>